Do you want speaker volume up or down a bit? Down a bit. Hello? Hey. Hey, what's going on? Can you hear us? Yes. All right. All right, I'll turn on my video. Okay. Hey. All right, everybody. This is um, this is Daniel Menard. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but yeah, that's good. Menard. He was the lead programmer on the game. He was also he also leads Crankshaft games. He also became art director later that we figured out on Wednesday night <laughs> later for the game. So, um, I guess I'll start off with questions. So, are you finally happy to relieve that the game is out and that you don't need to spend 24 seven like working on it or? Yeah, I'm totally relieved. I mean, we've been crunching like crazy on it for the last few months. Uh, I've been working 20 hour days, so it's good to finally have a weekend, take a break. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, where are the guys from the team? Uh, are, uh, are the artists there? No, we none of the artists did, did not show up, so we were kind of disappointed. But we were happy to talk with you, so. <laughs> but, um,. So, when it came to, like, I know that you took the weapons out of the game later. Like, do you feel yeah, that yeah. the game plays a lot better since it's less complicated and that people can understand it more, or...? Uh, I think so. I mean, we got some feedback from a uh, pretty reputable source. But we decided to, uh... I mean, the feedback was basically that we were trying to do too much, right? Um, the game was kind of complicated enough and our controls were all over the place in the beginning. Uh, I got played it back in January, so you know what that was like. Uh, we decided to take the weapons out and that to help make everything a bit more cohesive and make the sins and out more. Um, I know, I know, like, with, with the indie studio, you always have to be changing roles, you know, like, you're not always doing the same thing at once. Like, can you speak about how, like, when you started and then where you ended with the game, like, how did your role change being the lead of the studio versus being the art director? versus being programmer. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, I, I, I've always been doing the programming, so doing the kind of tech, tech stuff, uh, creating the engine and all that, so running on a custom engine. Um, that went pretty well. Uh, when Liz left the team, which was back in July, uh, that left kind of a big hole because no one really was willing to fill it in. So I kind of stepped up and, and took over the role of our director. Uh, I'm used to working with artists, but it's a pretty tough role to fill, and I don't know if we did a good job at it or not, but anyways, yeah, you know, it sucks to have Liz kind of burn out and just leave and move across the country and all that, but in the end, I think we pulled it together. <laughs> I know, like, you only raised about $16,000 on Kickstarter, and pe my, some people might be like, well, that's not a lot of money to begin with, like $16,000, but, like, what did that mean to you, like, getting your game done, what did the $16 really mean? Well, I mean, when we started, well, when we put out our Kickstarter, most of the game Kickstarter were going between 5 and 10. So that was like before Double Fine and everything. Uh, so we wanted to take something that was reasonable and would get us enough money. Our main objective was to go to PAC. We didn't really have any other kinds of money than just go to PAC. So we budgeted about $4,000. We figured getting eight would give us enough padding and to give up the words. And then uh, be able to go to Pax East in the uh, Boston team. Um, so we got got the money. We got a lot more money than we expected, actually. Uh, and getting a 16,000 is a bit. We could cover software licenses, so I had to pay, and, like, you know, get, getting free HBO Max licenses and my licenses, which are really expensive. And then also uh, just cover some of the travel expenses that the team had just going around doing PR for the game. So that was. Uh, it was super helpful for the money, but I mean, it, didn't, it didn't really cut into any development costs because you can't really pay anyone a whole lot of 16 grand in a bank. But it did cover kind of a lot of incentive costs that helped make the process easier. So, um, when it comes to like, when it came to making the game like four player, like, were you ever deciding, like, maybe it should be two player? Like, and like, how do you balance the game for four players versus one player versus two players versus three? Or, well, I mean, when we started off, we wanted to do the seven daily sins, and when our original prototype kind of had like we put change characters after we had our we wanted to go to seven players, but there was no way to really do that on one console because initially we were playing kind of like a living room game, so there was no way to do that. So we added, you know, we, we stuck to four players. There's a limit. 
but uh, we allow people to start changing characters, and that's kind of where the base mechanic is born. Um, in terms of balancing, we don't really do much between the players because the game mechanics and the puzzles and stuff kind of work fine in co op. The main thing that changes is we increase the health of the enemies, and then we decrease the health of the sins. So you have a bit more, like you take more damage, and the enemies are tougher to kill. So that's the only thing that, that changes uh, in co op. Balancing between the sins is really difficult, and that's kind of like making sure that players can play the different sins and have a good time with each one. And then you don't have one sin being way overused, where like everyone wants to fight for envy, and the other sins are not useful anymore. So we try to make sure that we balanced out their abilities so that um, you wouldn't have a player really like hogging one sin that would really advantageous to switch between them all the time. Uh, my last question before I open it to the floor is, um, so when it, I know your very first game that you made was a mod for Half Life Two, and then yeah, you yeah. went from making a mod to a full game like. What have you learned from making two games? Dude. From making Eternal Silence was the first game to making. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, this is our first. Eternal Silence was a multiplayer game, so that kind of it takes a lot of the pressure off you as a game designer because you just have to create, like you create the tools and then the people, the players that, that play your game, they kind of have the fun, and, and you don't really have to do too much. You just create weapons, and create a couple of maps, and people kind of have fun automatically. You don't have to. Do, craft an adventure and all that in a multiplayer game. So this is our first single player game and, and that was like a big learning experience. Like the, the learning curve of figuring out that, oh, we have to make like 20 levels to make this game have any kind of content in it. That was a huge, huge revelation. Um, and I mean, the other thing that we learned is just the amount of polish required for commercial games is much, much higher. And I think Party of Sins could have benefited from a bit more polish actually. Um, but we've been in development for so long, we just want to get it out there. Get some sales, get some feedback, and then patch it up as we go. Um, if anybody wants to ask any questions, they can come up right to the microphone or Kyle. Oh, me. Does anybody want to ask any questions? Or... Uh oh, questions. How did you come up with the name Party of Sin? I get the Sin part, but I was like, is it the party is just because there's four people playing it, or is it something to do with the story? Um, initially, it was like, we, we thought of it as a party game. So yeah, the Party of Sin kind of came from the fact that you had four players, you're expected to be kind of in the living room and, and having fun. And, and also, the backstabbing of the characters was, was uh, part of where that thing came from, the idea that the Sin were uh, you know, fighting angels, but then also kind of messing with each other as we go, so it's like the, the party vibe. Um, we had a couple of other names for the game, like one of the close second ones was Sin, Party of Seven, and stuff like that, there's a couple of alternates. But I think Party of Sin was the first, it's one of the first ones we came up with, and it's the one that just stuck. It gets pretty good Google rankings, too. <laughs> Hello. I don't think you can see me, but I was just curious about. I was just curious what gaming influences you and the rest of the team might have had, because a game, one name that kept going through my head was uh, the Lost Vikings, which is very similar. And you have different characters with different moves, and you have to get them to coronate. I was curious what history you've got with that. Um, Who well, gaming I like in general? Game I played myself. I mean, you, you prefer comparisons to it a lot because uh, I know it's a game that has really similar mechanics. Um, I, I have a chance to actually play it though, so that would be pretty cool. I mean, our main influence is because when we started Party of Sin three and a half years ago, there wasn't any shrine, there wasn't any. Uh, I, I mean, I had played Lost Viking, so it was like the, the whole character swap thing seemed really novel. Um, but the, our main influences were just the classics. Like, the, you know, we were playing a lot of. Uh, for Mario Bros. on Wii, which was really inspiring in terms of the party, like what players could do to each other to screw each other up. Because if you ever played that game, it's straight Mario, but then you can jump on another player's head or pick them up and throw them into a, a ditch or whatever. Uh, there's all kinds of different interactions, and we want to take that to push it a step further. And then the other interactions were stuff like Zelda. And, um, I mean, Zelda less of a platformer, but just the, the game mechanics, the way they set up, it's one of my favorite games. And Mario can be those kind of games, like really all the classics. All right, thank you. Hey Dan, this is Trey from IGDADC. Um, 
Just wondered how your early sales looked and what kind of plans you guys have for marketing and promoting the game uh, in the months to come. Uh, I don't have a <laughs> number yet. I don't have a official number yet. So I'm still waiting for it kind of to uh, let me know what, uh, how we did. I mean, based on our celebrity strategy, we've got, in the first two days, we had 3,000 players uh, playing. So it's not bad. Uh, um, I'm pretty happy with the numbers. We're going to keep promoting it. We're going to, for sure, um, Start getting into bundles and things like that. Uh, a lot of a lot of work to be done on the PR side of things. Like just make sure you can go on the Steam sale, get the bundles, and uh, keep promoting the Steam. Sounds good. Thank you. Any more questions? Or... One more. One more. One more. You got one more. When can we expect Party of Sin two? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no plans yet, but I think I think we're definitely going to be releasing new characters. I think uh, there's a lot of improvements to be made on the base game. I think you know online co-op is been a feature that I've heard about a million times every time people tell me uh, about the game. So that's going to be like feature number one on the sequel, and then, then we're going to start developing a new story and probably switching characters out around a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's it's going to be in the works. I don't know if we're going to revisit it right away. Um, we were planning a kind of a mobile tablet game in between, but, but uh, we'll see. I also I also want to revisit Eternal Silence. That's another franchise I was hoping to look at. Uh, um, I guess one last question: Any plans to come to Xbox or um, PlayStation Three through download or? No, I think I think we're gonna try to hit the uh, Xbox Live and Games channel. I think that's gonna be one thing we're gonna be doing in the next few months. There's a bit of optimization work to be done, so there's some programming and technology and stuff. Um, and until that's done, it won't come out. But I think two to three months uh, should give us enough time to get that work done. Any more questions? Or... All right. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for coming on, and we really cool. appreciate like giving us the code for the game. So. <laughs> yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, you know, have a lot of fun. Let me know what you think. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Best of luck. Woo! Bye.